Biohazard. Or if you're a pussy, Resident Evil. Everybody knows what Resident Evil is. Your dad knows about it, your mom knows about it, and your doctor knows about it. And the first thing they say when you mention Resident Evil to them is, oh yeah, the movie, right? The movie sucked. Resident Evil have gone through so many damn changes over the years, or decades, starting with the standard locked camera angles and tank controls to a third person over the shoulder action game to a straight out action game with zombies in it, and then it's just left for dead. But then it turns into freaking amnesia! One thing that for sure is gonna happen with Resident Evil is that you'll have absolutely no idea what the hell they're going to do next. Which I suppose is fine. But let's go back to 1996. Or actually 2002, because that's when the remake of the original Resident Evil came out. This is how you make a remake, people. This is one of the very few horror games that I've actually played. It's 15 years old now. Does it still hold up to this day? <laughs> yeah. And since it's Halloween and all, I need to put up some decorations. on a very small budget. Before we begin, I just need to tell you a little secret about myself. I am a goddamn pussy when it comes to horror games. I seriously can't handle them for shit. I get uneasy, paranoid, and I keep thinking about scary stuff even after I've turned the game off. But if there's one thing that I absolutely hate, it's when something is chasing you. Which is why I never touched games like Amnesia or Outlast, etc. Hell, something could chase me in a freaking Mario game and I would be scared shitless. I swear, sometimes I can't even handle a game of tag. Really? But for whatever reason, and I don't know how, the Resident Evil remake is one of my favorite games of all time. It's not just the creepy stuff going on in the game, but it's everything that surrounds the creepiness. Both gameplay-wise and atmospherically. So you get introduced to this vague as hell difficulty screen. I mean, how many games out there compares a video game difficulty to hiking? We've got climbing a mountain, going on a hike, and taking a walk. Basically, this is what you have to pick. The taking a walk one didn't even exist in the first release of this game, but was added to the remastered version. Might as well add a fourth one in there while we're at it. Like watching TV. You are a lazy shit. Doing absolutely nothing. I think I'm gonna pick that one. Now there are two ways to play this game. There is the lame way, and then there's the not so lame way. The game starts off with your squad of superheroes searching for their sidekicks in the raccoon forest in the Arclay Mountains, because they disappear to... get their own movie. Bravo Team's helicopter was a derelict. No, it's just broken. Come on, it doesn't look that bad. I mean, those puppies are kind of cute. <laughs> so your squad runs away from the group of puppies getting chased into a big ass mansion, and now they're stuck. Right. So deflated Johnny Bravo tells you to check out what's going on behind a door, which leads to a dining room. Your buddy Barry finds a puddle of blood and decides to examine it for whatever reason. So you enter the next door to find your very first encounter. Should I let you finish eating? Oh god, he's angry at me. I'm out of here. Let me take care of it! Now he's just dead. Heading back to report to Johnny Bravo, Barry and Jill realize that he's gone. And deciding to split up, which breaks the number one rule of any horror situation, they both go to investigate two different areas to find out what the hell is going on, and thus, the survival horror begins. What? 
This is where the game leaves you completely on your own. You have no choice but to explore and see what happens. You find your very first defensive weapon, but as soon as you're about to go back out, it's a zombie! So you're supposed to use this defensive weapon against him, but if you're actually good at this game, you just do this. And see ya! And then you just, um, shove this thing in there. And now, he, he's, he's stuck. This guy can stay like this for the entire game. Take this, and this. You like this? Stop hitting yourself. Knives are cool, aren't they? Here, check this out. This is my zebra kitchen knife. <laughs> I cook food with this. From here on out, you just need to find your way through the mansion, hoping to find stuff that'll help you progress in the game. You'll be encountering more and more zombies and journals that tells the story of certain people who lived or worked in this mansion, as well as some creatures that you've yet to encounter. Now, the stuff that I find to be genius with this game is that it doesn't have to rely on jump scares. Sure, there is like one or two of them in there, but there are so many different things that makes the experience much more creepier. Like, for example, one thing that will probably make you feel uneasy as hell is ammo. You have to conserve ammo for your weapons and do your best in not trying to waste your bullets. You want to kill that zombie, but is it really for the best? I don't know, probably. You just need to go and a Here's one thing that the original game didn't have. Crimson heads. These guys are zombies that you've killed, but unless you've burned their bodies or shooting their heads off, they will come back to life more quicker and deadlier than before. You gonna wake up? Yeah, you're gonna wake up, aren't you? I don't like it when they wake up. Screw it, I'm going for it. <laughs> so knowing that if you kill the zombies and that they'll eventually wake up again as crimson heads, you always hesitate with killing them because that could eventually cause some more trouble later on. Another paranoid feeling is health. You can only see your health by going into the item screen and if it says fine, then you're fine. But once it goes to caution, you have to tell yourself, all right, maybe I need to fix that. But if you hit orange caution or danger, you need to get your shit together. Herbs are scattered around all over the mansion, and there are three kinds of herbs. Green, red, and blue. Green are the ones that heal you, duh. Red are used to combine with a green herb to triple its effect, and blue ones are used to cure poison, which doesn't appear until after the first part of the game, so... Don't get poisoned, you idiot! There are also first aid sprays, but I stay the hell away from those because they're dirty little umbrella products. I'll have you know that I only use Axe Body Spray for men. Another eerie factoid to this game is that you can only carry very few items on you at a time. This includes weapons, ammo, health, keys, and other items that you need to solve puzzles and progress in the game. You will eventually get to a point where you're like, damn, should I take this with me? This adds another unsettling feeling where you have to be careful of what you bring and what you can lose. Like, ammo, shit! Luckily, there are quote-unquote safe rooms where you can store your items in boxes and let them stay there until you need them later on. Or you can also just throw items that you don't need, like the knife, for example. Carrying the knife is basically a description for death. Unless you're really good at it. So what kind of crazy shit can we find in this mansion? There are, of course, a bunch of death traps, of course, but the more you explore, the more you find out that there's more to this mansion than what meets the eye. Entering a room you've never been into, you never really know if anything could show up from around the corner. Like, holy crap, that's a giant snake! I have also got a giant snake. It's pretty small. Sometimes you also stumble upon some of your squad mates, either dead or dying. Richard. Or just Barry. Ugh. The fuck are you doing that for? I want to point out how vastly different this remake is compared to the original. You already know that the background and environment are pre-rendered, but there is such a big shift from kinda cool to this looks freaking scary, I'm scared, help. It's fascinating to see how the jump from one generation of consoles can have such an impact on what you can do. The original game came out in 1996 and then six years later, BAM! Everything looks so, so much better. Not only did they improve the visuals, but they expanded the whole game by changing a few things while also adding completely new rooms and areas that you need to go through. Stuff like this would trick people who play the original and then would start playing the remake for the first time. They would be completely lost. I have to use a dog whistle? Oh yeah, and the voice acting got a little better. That was too close. You were almost a Jill sandwich. That was a close one.
A second late, he would have fit nicely into a sandwich. Just a little better. Probably the biggest change would be the inclusion of a completely new foe, Lisa Trevor. This bitch cannot be killed, and she freaks the hell out of me. Not necessarily that difficult to avoid if you know what you're doing, but knowing the backstory of this poor little girl makes her just more terrifying. She's the daughter of the architect who built the mansion and was experimented on, and has been in constant search for her mom for over 30 years. The game's got four different areas, the mansion, which is the main attraction, the boarding house, the caverns, and the lab. The boarding house is where you start to encounter more and more different creatures, like spiders, sharks, a giant plant, bees! So if you have a fear of spiders or sharks or bees or plants, then I promise you that you will have a great time. I hear you, Brad. Over. I'll have six double cheeseburgers, two large fries, a large happy juice, and... You guys sell food? This is Jill. Oh, do you deliver? Heading back to the mansion after you're done with the boarding house, you feel like you can handle this game pretty damn alright. You're well prepared. A few normal zombies is not gonna be a problem anymore. You are ready. But then, this happens. So now we've got these assholes! The hunters are probably the most dangerous creatures in this game, because if they want, they can kill you in one hit. They'll leap and tackle you and just give you a hard time in general. So they have pretty much been replacing the zombies, so now they're all scattered around the mansion. Have fun. Use the grenade launcher with acid rounds. They will die in one hit. Or two. Unless you miss. Now you're just being rude! Why are you doing this? Can you please get off me? Oh, look at that! He's a crimson head now. <laughs> That's kinda cute. Giant snake is back again? What the hell? Now we're in the caverns part. It's just Indiana Jones. Stop! Are you with anybody, Jill? No, but why? <sighs> Pineapples and pizza, YN? What? <laughs> oh, hey, look! It's Barry! Hi, Barry! Bye, Barry! Now, if you've got a severe case of, um, uh, giant spiders, you just have to shoot it like this. Wait, wait, hold on. Not like that. Hold on. Um, th th there. There we go. That will be $80. The caverns part is pretty short-lived, and I wouldn't really say it's the creepiest part of the game, because it isn't. Oh, crap, that's Lisa Trevor. I'm out. There! Now I'm safe. You will eventually get to the lab, which is the last part of the game, and if you don't have the magnum at this point, then you're stupid! This is where all those weird experiments happen, which cause most of the people to turn into zombies, and animals turn into... cockroach monkeys? Let go of me, you little turd! You get to see more information about the creatures that you have encountered, and some of the workers that... What? Everybody knows Wesker is the bad guy. Oh hey, look, it's Chris! It's Jill! So here's Johnny Brav, uh, Wesker, revealing the greatest biological organic weapon of the facility. The Tyrant. This thing is meant to become the most powerful weapon of mass destruction. He died after five shots. Now the self-destruct system has been activated and you need to get the hell out of there. Can't on, forget about on, Barry and Chris! You get up to the helipad to sing old Brad, the pilot who rudely abandoned you at the beginning, but as you do that, the tyrant comes back for revenge. This guy's a chump, I'll kick his ass! Brad throws down a rocket launcher and you know what happens, the tyrant blows the hell up! Oh, happy end. I'm traumatized now. Hey Barry, can I take a look at your gun? Hand me my gun! Okay, fine! Jeez. And that, my friends, is the Resident Evil Remake. 
It really is something that you'll have to experience by yourself in order to understand that unique feeling of being open to any kind of danger. You just can't help but staying cautious of your surroundings and such. I still think that this game is the prime example of how a remake should be made. Great visuals, great sound design, but most of all, the creepiness level of this game is just perfect. If you came up to me and asked me, hey, should I get the Resident Evil remake? Yes, 100%, yes! Why haven't you played it already? Are you dumb? Get the remastered version that came out in 2015. Or anything, any version. Just play it already. I'm Dex the Swede, signing out. Happy Halloween, everybody. I don't really like apples. Hey guys, thanks for watching this spooky video! Please go ahead and click that like button and don't forget to subscribe as well. Thank ya! Go ahead and follow me on Facebook and perhaps even on my Twitter as I'll be posting news, updates and other random spooks. And don't forget to join our Discord group as well. If you want to send some extra support then please go and check out my Patreon page. I've got some sweet ass rewards for you so please check the page out, it really does help me out. Link is in the description. Oh my god, I almost vomited. Oh my god. <laughs> Fuck, I'm never doing that again. Ah! Oh my god. <laughs>